When the teaser for the Abrams X came out, a lot of people asked me to make a video on it. Now, I have talked about it a bit before, but it was very speculative because all we got was a poorly lit render of it. And I felt like if I made the video when a teaser came out, it would be pretty much the same thing. So now that AUSA has happened, there's a lot more information on it. Now, there's a pretty big misconception I see going on with the Abrams X, and that is that people think it's definitely going to be in service. Like, they think it's going to be in production right now, which is not the case at all. The Abrams X is a tech demonstrator, which basically means they've made an Abrams that they think the army will want, or maybe they can pick parts that they like off of it, but it's probably not going to be in production anytime soon. And people have wondered if this thing is adopted, what is its role going to be? And from what GDLS is saying, it's meant to be a bridge between a SEP V4 and next gen tank. I don't know if it explicitly could be SEP V5, probably not. And they have hinted at exporting it as well. Now, as most of you probably know by this point, it uses a hydroelectric power pack. The actual engine itself is the Advanced Combat Engine, or ACE, which is basically a scalable post-piston diesel. Depending on what it's used in, it can have different horsepower ratings, including 750, 1000, and 1500. Basically, they want to put it in everything. Trucks, IFVs, tanks, you name it. The hybrid power pack is ideal for a few reasons. The army has held onto the turbine for so long because of its performance, but the issue is that it's not very fuel efficient. With the hybrid, you get the best of both worlds. You get an incredibly efficient engine that's also very powerful. For the sake of comparison, the hybrid is 50% more fuel efficient than the turbine. But instead of using this to get more range, they opted to have the same range with less fuel. They remove the front fuel tanks and put the three-man crew in the front of the hull. The main benefit is that this increases survivability. If the tank is hulled down when it's hit, the crew should be safe. As for the crew positions themselves, the driver is on the left, commander is in the middle, and the gunner is on the right. The positions can be reconfigured though. The positions use MFDs or multifunction displays. If you've played DCS, you're probably familiar with them. And since the crew is in the hull, that obviously means the turret is remotely controlled. But it's also optionally manned. So if there's a malfunction of some kind, someone can get in the turret, but apparently it's not very comfortable, so it's not ideal. In its base configuration, the turret has basically no armor, and this is mostly to save weight. But if the customer wants, they can ask for more armor. It's sort of like the XM8, there are scalable armor packages. Now, as I mentioned in my original Abrams X video, the gun is the XM360 cannon, which is a 120. It was developed for the Future Combat Systems program, so it's actually somewhat old, it's not incredibly new. Its main benefit is weight saving. It's a full ton lighter than the M256, but it can also handle higher pressure ammunition. And it's ETC compatible. I don't expect they'll use that feature though. And I've seen a lot of people throwing a fuss that it doesn't have a 130 or a 140, but that's not ideal for a few reasons. If your vehicle is going to be transitionary, you don't want to shake up logistics too much. Really, it's the same reason the original Abrams used the 105 to start out with. The XM360 can use existing ammo stockpiles, it would be less expensive to procure, and it saves both weight and space. As for how the gun's loaded, it's fed by a Maget autoloader. It's a cassette autoloader placed in the bustle. Despite what some people think, it is a new autoloader design. It's not the old Maget design. In that one, the arm had to swing because the ammunition is facing backwards, now, since the new one is simpler, I would bet the fire rate's probably higher as well. The original one had a fire rate of 12 RPM, or 1 round every 5 seconds, and I bet the new one's a bit faster. As for the remote weapon system, it's mounting an M230LF, which is a variant of the Apache's gun. It's a bit heavier and has a lower fire rate. It was probably chosen because it's actually pretty light, and it has high explosive proximity rounds, which would be great for drones. It also has HEDP, which can be used for everything else, including infantry and light vehicles. Now, the RWS also has a mount for Javelin attached, but I'm not sure they intend to use it. As for other turret features, it has a laser warning system, the ANVVR-4. It's the same one used on the SEP-V4. It also has three trophy stations. Two are in the traditional configuration, and the other is pointed vertically. The latter is supposed to defeat top attack munitions. Another active protection system could be chosen. It's just representative. The sights are Pazio sights from Safran Optics. They're already used by the MPF and EBRC Jaguar. They have 3rd gen thermals, a panoramic scan mode, laser rangefinder, and automatic tracking. Now, something I haven't seen people talk about, on the bustle you can see 4 switchblade canisters. If you don't know what switchblade is, it's a loitering munition drone. So the Abrams X is obviously oriented towards reducing weight, but as far as how much it actually weighs, there's a lot of confusion. Basically, a rep said it weighs 54 tons. As for what kind of ton, he didn't specify. Some say 54 short tons, some say 54 metric. The former is extremely hard to believe, but no matter how you slice it, the Abrams X is way lighter. 
And you might wonder why that's so important, and it mostly comes down to logistics. Transporting a 66 ton tank is really hard, and some bridges can't handle a tank that heavy. It's a problem the army's been wanting to address for a while now. I think I've covered pretty much everything about it that we know of anyway. Uh, it does also use lightweight tracks, but those have been around for a while now. As for if the army might adopt it, it's hard to say. It's a pretty radical departure, but it does have some really nice features. I think the army is definitely going to pick some pieces off of it, but as a whole, I'm not sure it's going to be adopted. I know people are speculating that it's going to be really expensive, but a lot of the parts are pretty off the shelf actually. Anyway, I hope that was informative, and I'll see you on the next one.